in our previous unit, we talked about how to select data from our database. Uh, we basically worked with tables that already had data in it from our SQL script that we ran in the first week of class. In this unit, we're, our next topic is going to be tables. So we were able to select from tables last week, but how do we create those tables and how do we populate it with data? Uh, this week, we're going to talk about creating and editing those tables. Um, and then uh, in a later unit, we're going to talk about how to actually populate it with data. And really, these two operations fall into two different categories of SQL scripts. Your book talks about DML versus DDL. This week, we're talking about some DDL scripts, which uh, DDL SQL, rather, which is data definition language. That's when we edit the underlying schema of the database. We're changing things uh, in the schema. We're not actually working with data. Or DML is the data manipulation language when we're basically doing anything that's CRUD. CRUD is the acronym Create, Read, Update, and Delete. So if we're creating, reading, updating, or deleting with SQL statements, then those are data manipulation language, which we're going to start talking about, uh, I believe, next week. We'll start covering that a little bit. But for right now, we're just going to learn about tables, how to create these. Now, in the first unit, right, so in the very beginning of the class, in our first real academic unit, right, so the first unit you installed uh, Apex or you set up your access for Apex and you know, we kind of had an overview of the course, but in the second week, we started talking about, um, uh, in the second week, we started talking about database design. So I asked you, you know, I talked about it in the PowerPoint. I showed you some examples of, you know, what databases would look like. And we talked about tables and, you know, primary keys and things like that, um, which we'll start working with later on. But, um, but if you're going to create a table, the first thing you're going to need to know is uh, is what you're going to call the table, right? What are your tables that you need in your database? So if you're a DBA and you're looking at a database design, you're going to have all these tables that have to get created. Those tables are going to have columns. The columns are going to have names as well. A couple rules just to review with you real quick, and these are in your book as well. So tables and uh, table and column names can each be a maximum of 30 characters with no blank spaces. Uh, so you have up to 30 characters for both the table name and for column names. They have to begin with a letter. You can't start with a number or a uh, symbol or anything like that. You can't have a table named dollar sign something or pound sign something. It has to be a letter, uh, although it doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. Uh, it can contain numbers, uh, and it can contain letters, of course, But so it can contain numbers. Uh, it can have the number sign in it, but it can't start with it, and it can have an underscore in it. A lot of times people will use the underscore in place of a space. Uh, or they'll use camel case instead of underspace. So camel case is when you uh, capitalize the first letter of each word. Uh, so sometimes people do that. And again, these go for these are rules for both the table name and the names of the columns, which we talked about tables and columns and rows in that first PowerPoint. Uh, they have to be unique. So uh, throughout the entire database. So uh, well, not the entire data. The, each table name must be unique within a database, and each column name must be unique within a table. The column names can repeat in different tables. Uh, I don't think we talked about it in this class, but there's a uh, uh, one of the problems with databases is homonym naming of, uh, of table column names. And what happens is you use the same word to describe different things in different tables. Usually what you want to do is use the same word to describe the same thing in different tables. Uh, and we'll talk about that with foreign keys. If you use the same name as the foreign, if for a foreign key as the primary key to which it references, that's perfectly acceptable. And that would be good design practice but using the same name for a column that's also in another table when they mean something different is generally not the best design practice. Uh, and you can't use any reserved words. For example, you can't have a table called select or a table called insert. These are keywords that we use in data manipulation language. So you, you wouldn't be able to do select star from select, uh, which we learned about last week, right? So we learned how to use the select star from table name. Uh, it'd be awful confusing if you had a table name called select and it would be select star from select. Uh, which wouldn't make much sense. So you can't use any of the reserve keywords uh, uh, for a SQL. So those are our basic rules. Um, all right, so let's see. So uh, the other thing we have to worry about with uh, with database tables is what the data types are. So that's something else that you should have done in the design phase. So when you design your database, you would, uh, you would basically um, uh, come up with what the, or determine what your uh, data types are going to be. So some basic ones that you'll see in Oracle. Um, one of the most basic is char. Char it basically is short for character. So that means it's a column that can have character data in it. Um, so usually when you declare a column as a char, 
you have to tell Oracle the maximum length that's allowed for that uh, for data in that field. Now, the important thing about char is when you declare a column a char, uh, it's always going to be the length that you define. So if you let's say you make it a char 16, that means the length of the column will always be 16. Even if you put a character, even if you put character data in that's only four characters, it's still going to be used. It's going to still use the full 16 characters in that column. So another option is the var char. Uh, var char allows you to use only the amount of space needed to store that character data, and you can do up to 2,000 or up sorry up to 4,000 characters. So you can define the length of that column up to 4,000 characters, but it will only use the number of characters that you used in the string that you inserted into that column. So it's a little more efficient in some sense. Uh, the problem, you know, it, it, whether one's more efficient or not really comes down to how you're using the column. Uh, if typically the values are a fixed length, then char is a better choice. If typically they're not a fixed length, then var char is typically a better choice, but there's other scenarios as well, such as, uh, and we don't really talk about this yet in this course, but uh, but Oracle has, uh, you know, has to manage the, uh, uh, the data files that store the information about the tables, and if you put two, you know, if you if you have a var char column and it changes often, every time you make a change, it has to append that record to the end of the table. It can't just change it in place, which means it changes the index of records, which means that eventually you have to re-index or reorganize the records in that file, which can become inefficient. So if it's a field that you're going to change a lot, then sometimes char is a better choice, even if it's a variable length that you may be inserting. So some things you have to think about there. Another basic type would be a number. Um, so with a number, you also have to define the precision and the scale. Um, so for example, the precision is how many, the precision tells you how many of the, uh, uh, or how much of the number is gonna be decimal after the decimal point, and the scale is the full size of the number. So for example, if, uh, if you wanted to do money up to uh, nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. There are let's see nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. That's four digits plus another two after the decimal point. So the precision would be two. The scale would be six. Okay. So that's how numbers work. And then dates. Uh, so date is another column type. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that I'm not going to get into uh, in this presentation. But I just wanted to give you a couple basic ones to start with. All right. So let's start. I'm going to put the uh, syntax for creating a table on the screen here. So this is basically what the create statement looks like. So you're going to use the create keyword. Uh, we're going to create a table. Uh, optionally, you can provide the schema. You don't have to. It'll By default, it'll use the schema that you're logged into. Uh, but you could define the schema if you have multiple schemas in your user space, then you would have to define which schema if you wanted to go into a different schema. Uh, we'll talk about schemas later on, though. We, we're not really going to worry about those yet. Uh, but schemas basically are um, sort of like containers that you could put your objects in inside a database. Um, and then you can reference them by that container's name, more or less. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. And then, of course, you have the table name, which is required. So you do have to give it the table name. This is what it has to be at least 30 characters. I'm sorry, no more than 30 characters. Uh, it has to start with a letter. No, you know, uh, no special characters or anything. Uh, though you can have the underscore and the pound signed in it. Then you have your column names. Same rules for the column names. So then you put your column name, the data type. So this would be var char or, n, or uh, uh, char or number or date, as I talked about before. And optionally, you can provide a default value. Um, if you want to have multiple columns, which is typical, right? We usually want to have more than one column. You'll have a uh, comma, then the next column name data type and default, which is optional, the default. And then when you're all done, uh, you're going to close your parentheses from the beginning. So all of this is enclosed in parentheses. And then you always end with a semicolon, as you see here. So take a look at the syntax here. Um, so here's our create table syntax. So I'm going to create a table. I'm going to call it account manager or ACCT manager, kind of shorthand there. Then inside the parentheses, uh, ending with the semicolon. So inside the parentheses, I have my list of columns that you see here. Uh, notice we've got a couple different uh, uh, types here, right? So we have a char four, so it's just a four length basic character. Uh, then we have the first name and the last name, which are both a maximum of 12 characters in a var char field, which means if there's only four characters in the name, it'll only use four. Then we have the date, right? So the uh, AME date, which is a date field, and it has a default value of sysdate. We're gonna learn about functions later on, uh, but sysdate is just gonna substitute in whatever the current date and time is. So that means if someone doesn't provide uh, the date, 
it's going to use the date that they uh, uh, that they inserted the record if none is provided. So that's the default value. Then we have their salary and commission, which are both numbers, uh, different uh, uh, different scale and precision on these, but uh, same idea. Then they have the uh, the default uh, for the commission is going to be zero. Then we have this column, which is a little bit different. Notice that this one uh, is is uh, a virtual column, right? So we don't actually ever insert a value here. This is a calculated value, so we can uh, so so you wouldn't be able to insert a value into this uh, into this field. If you did, it would generate an error. Excuse me, an oracle. Oracle would throw an error if you try to insert a uh, an explicit value in there. It has to be calculated on a uh, select statement. Um, but it's a column nonetheless. And then we finally have the, the uh, region, which is a apparently a two-letter code. Uh, so that's going to be a char uh, field. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this up here on the top because we won't be able to run that. And let me hit run and see if it creates this table. And it worked. So you can see here it uh, created the table. It took 0 0.02 seconds to do it. Not too bad. Um, in, uh, in case you're following along, I did have a typo right here. I, I put the letter T in sysdate. It should just be sysdate, not sysTdate. Uh, so make sure you don't have the same mistake. Um, also, if you run this and you get an error message that the table name already exists, you can drop the table first if you like. Uh, so to do that, if you need to drop the table first, there's no data in it, although you could try a select statement that we learned last week to check to see if there's data in it first. But you're going to do drop table account manager. Um, so you'll just run this statement. That'll remove the table. And then you'll be able to run this statement to create it. Uh, that is, or if you made a mistake and accidentally created it missing a column or something like that. So I just wanted to tell you how to drop a table in case you need to do so. So there you go. So that created the, uh, the table. Uh, that was pretty easy, right? Um, so once you create a table, uh, sometimes you might have a need to look at the schema for that table. Now, since we're using um, uh, Application Express, there is a, uh, in the SQL workshop, uh, you can kind of cheat here if you wanted to. In the SQL Workshop, you can go to the Object Browser, and that'll show you all the columns and types and show you the design of the table, but we don't always have the luxury to do that. So there's a keyword to do that in SQL. You type DSC, which stands for Describe, and then I'll type Account Manager. I'll run that, and that should give me information about that table, and here it is. So let me move this up a little bit so we can see it. So here's all of my column names, and you can see here the data types, the length of those columns, the precision and scale if it's a number, tells us if it's a primary key or not. Uh, and over here we can see the default value, right? So over here for uh, AM earn, there's our default value. It automatically um, created the length for us based on the uh, on the fact that it's calculated from these two values up here. But basically it worked, right? So that gave us some information about the table. So the next thing we'll learn is how to create a table from another table. So instead of creating a table from scratch, instead if we have another table that has some of the columns that we need or most of the columns that we need and it already has the data that we're going to need, we could just select from that table and have it create a whole new table from that select statement. We already learned how to do a select last week, so you already know how to, how to construct a basic SQL statement uh, or a select statement. Uh, if you don't want to use the same column names, that's okay. You can alias the column names as something else, and it will use the alias column name. So that's kind of nice. You can, uh, and again, we already learned how to do that, so you can use an alias, and it'll do that. You can also declare the column names at the top, so you can see here. Uh, so in the command, I do create table table name. That's just like our previous command. But then optionally, I can put in a list of column names for my new table, and then my subquery has to be a select statement that has the exact same number of columns. And it will use the data types from the table from whence it was selected from. Uh, so that's, an op that's one option. You could do it that way. You could also not declare the column names, and it will use the column names that are in your select statement, including ones that you alias. So let's take a look at how to do this. We're, we'll use an example from the uh, book. So here's the syntax to, do, to create a table called customer underscore market. And to make that table, I'm going to select some columns from the customer's table, as you can see here. Now I want to show you what happens when I run just this select statement. So let me go ahead and run that. That should give me a list of some records. So here we go down here. We've got some records. So if I were to use that full 
uh, statement that I showed you earlier. So let me put that statement back in here. So now that this is a create table statement that includes the uh, that select statement as a subquery, when I run this, it should take these results down here that we see down here, and it's going to use that to create a whole new table called customer. I'm sorry, cust underscore marketing. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. All right, so you can see that it ran. So it completed. And up here, I'm going to go ahead and select from that. So custom, oops, sorry. So select star from cost underscore market. And as you can see, it's almost exactly the same. Well, it is exactly the same as the uh, as the select statement that we did before, but it's a whole new table. So occasionally we'll need to make changes to tables after we've created them or at some point. We might need to remove columns. We might need to add new columns or modify an existing column. Uh, so this is the basic syntax. You're going to do alter table and then the name of that table, followed by either add, modify, or drop column. Uh, by the way, only drop contains the word column in it. Um, so we're going to add, modify, or drop column, then the column name, and then optionally a definition. So let's take a look at what this looks like with a real example. So here we're going to uh, alter the publisher table, and we're going to add, presumably they already have a phone number, but we're going to add an extension, uh, which is going to be a number field up to four characters. So we're going to add the extension column. I'll have to delete this up here in the top in order to run this. So let's go ahead and run this and see if that works. All right, so that's done. And if you recall, in order to uh, see what the table schema looks like, we're just going to use the describe command to do that. So we'll just do describe publisher. And let's see if that column is now included in the, uh, in the column list. There it is. So it added the extension. Uh, and it has a precision of four, just as we uh, just as we indicated. Now, let's say we hired a new account manager whose name uh, is more than twelve characters, right? So uh, we only allowed twelve characters when we created that table. So maybe somebody comes to us and says, "Hey, Mr. DBA or Miss DBA, we need to uh, make that column a little bit wider so we can accommodate this new salesperson with a uh, or new account manager with a large name." So we're going to do alter table account manager. And we're going to modify and last. And we're going to set it to 18 as opposed to uh, 12. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. And uh, by the way, I don't have to capitalize modify. It should work even though it's lowercase. Um, so there it is. So it worked. So that modified that. And if, if you uh, want to prove it, we'll just do describe account manager. And we'll take a look at that. All right, you can see right here the length of our last name is now 18 instead of the uh, the shorter column width that we had before. Now, the thing about modifying uh, modifying a column, I modified it down to, uh, to 18 characters. But just as a curiosity, you know, let's say you tried to do alter uh, table account manager. And we're going to uh, modify am last. So maybe I decide, you know what, 18 is actually a little bit too long. We don't want our salespeople to have uh, names that are that long. So we are going to instead go back to 12, right? We're going to say, you know what, we're not going to change our policy. We're just going to make everybody use a 12 character name. So if I try to shorten that column, it should give me an error message. Let's see what it does. Oh, it actually worked. That's good. Uh, in, a, in a live database, if you already had data that was too long, it might either, you know, the two options here are that uh, um, that you could either truncate the data down to 12 again, in other words, just chop off, you know, the extra characters, uh, or uh, it would fail. So in Oracle, it fails. If you have, you know, so if there's any records that cannot be shortened to the new length, it's not going to let you make that change. Instead, you have to go and change the length of all the fields first, right? Make sure nothing exceeds that length. Then you can go and change the length of the field. Uh, so it's important to make sure uh, that you understand that if you're trying to make those modifications. So let's say you uh, decided you don't need that extension column, right? We added that extension column, but, you know, I don't know, maybe we, uh, we don't really need it there. Maybe we'll just make people dial zero for the operator, right? 
Oops. Let me try that again. Alter table publisher. I don't know why my browser keeps uh, auto correcting for some reason. Remember the drop keyword is actually two words, drop column, and we'll drop extension. So that should remove the extension column from publisher. And just to make sure it worked, we should no longer see extension in the column list. And there it is, it's gone. So it was able to remove it. So that's how we remove a column. Okay. So another option we have, let's say uh, we have our, now if you recall earlier, um, I created a table called uh, cust underscore market. I forgot the star from. So if I uh, take a look at this table, we should see a bunch of data in here, right? This is a real table. Um, but we could also rename this, right? So if I use the rename command, so I'm going to do rename cust underscore market, and I'm going to put a, give it a new name. I'm going to call it uh, cust underscore temp, okay? I'm going to rename it to cust underscore temp. Let me go ahead and run that. All right, so now if I do a select from cost underscore market, this should fail because this table should no longer exist because we renamed it, right? So that no longer exists. But if I try to select from temp, the new name, you can see that it works because we renamed that, that table. So we can rename our tables. Now, um, another option we have is to truncate a table. So uh, basically, truncate table removes everything. Uh, so it removes all the rows in the table. So all the rows are uh, row. I'm sorry, rows are completely removed, including any auto numbers. Everything is reset. If you used um, uh, seeds, we're going to talk about um, uh, doing that later on. But but basically, everything is reset to square one when you do a truncate. It's almost as if there was never any data in there to begin with. So it kind of resets it back to square one when you first created it. So let's go ahead and truncate customer underscore temp. And that should essentially bring our, this table should basically remove everything from that table. So it's completely gone now. Um, so if I do a select from that table, select star from cust underscore temp, there's no records in there now, or at least there shouldn't be because I did a truncate, right? So no data found. So uh, the other thing I could do is drop the table entirely. Right, so now that there's no data, I'm just gonna go ahead and do drop table. We talked about this in the very beginning. I told you that you could delete a table if you wanted to. This is how you drop an entire table from the database. So now that table will no longer exist in my database. It's as if it was never there. The thing about dropping a table is that it also removes all the data that's associated with it. So it's a pretty big mistake if you did not intend to delete a table. But luckily, like everything else in uh, computing, we have a recycling bin, right? Uh, so starting in Oracle 10G, they added this ability to recover uh, from a recycling bin. So if I do select object underscore name, and then original name from recycle bin, let's see if it, uh, if it can find this in the recycling bin. All right, so um, here's the new object name in the recycling bin, right? This is what it's called in the recycling bin. And over here are the table names. So there's the cust temp table. Here's the account manager table that I removed uh, earlier. Uh, and there's a, another table, I don't know what that is, but uh, but any event, there's the one that I just removed, cust temp. So if I wanted to, I could recover that table and I'm gonna use the flashback command to do that. So if we do flashback table, uh, we're going to do cust underscore temp to before drop, right? Because I dropped that table. So now we're going to recover it from before the drop. So let's see if that works. All right, so it ran the statement. So in all likelihood, I should have that table back. And if I do a uh, select star from 
cost underscore temp. No data found, but that's okay. The table is there, right? I recovered it. Uh, now, if I wanted to, um, I could purge it by typing purge table, and then I could put in uh, quotes, I could put that uh, that long number. I forgot to put it on my, uh, you know, so forth and so on. I forgot to put it on my, um, you know, in my, in my clipboard, so I can't just paste the name, that long name. It didn't really mean much. It almost looked, It's just a hash, right? That... Uh, that long name that was in the recycling bin, um, but I could purge it that way, um, you know, just purge it from the recycling bin. That way it's no longer in the recycling bin at all, and I will never be able to get that data back. The other option um, is when you do a drop, right? So let's say I wanted to drop the table and not have it in the recycling bin. I could do drop table, cust underscore temp, and then I could use the keyword purge on the end. So if I add the purge keyword on the end, Go ahead and run this. So the table is dropped. So now I'm going to re uh, search uh, from the recycling bin again. Select star from recycle bin. And let's see if that table is there. It shouldn't be. And as you can see, um, under original name, I no longer have that table. Uh, by the way, here's all the other fields you have available to you in, the, uh, in that recycling bin table, that virtual table. In any event, um, cust te underscore temp is gone because I purged it, so I would not be able to get that table back uh, at this point. So that completely removes the table. So in this presentation, I showed you how to create a table. I told you uh, uh, how you can look at the contents of a table using the describe command. I told you some of the rules with creating tables, like uh, the limitation of uh, the number of columns you can have is 1,000, the length of the column names and the table names is 30, some of the characters you're allowed to have. Uh, we talked about how each uh, column in a table has to be unique. Um, we talked about using the alter command to change a table by adding, removing, or modifying column names or column uh, uh, data types. I told you how to rename a table if you wanted to rename it, uh, you know, if you wanted to give the table a new name. I showed you how to truncate a table, which removes all the rows, how to drop a table, which completely removes the entire table, uh, and then how to use the flashback command to get it back from the recycling bin if you accidentally drop the table, for example, and also how to drop a table and make it so you can't get it back by using that purge keyword at the end. So that's it. So that's uh, everything you need to know about creating tables uh, in your uh, database schema.